in today's video I want to talk about why it's absolutely essential that you should be copying other photographers work and also I want to take some pictures of some rapeseed so roll that epic b-roll oh, and yes I know it's not epic and it's just b-roll but I love it I love my b-roll so roll the b-roll but I think it's epic and play that cheesy music too So let's go over some of the reasons why I think it's absolutely essential that you copy other photographers and not just photographers, photographers on YouTube and photographs that you see. And the first reason for that for me is it's absolutely essential to develop a technical ability. Now, you can go out and take photos all day long, but how would you know if you're doing it wrong if you're not learning from someone? If someone's not there to say, well, that's not right. Why don't you use this or why don't you do this? So by watching other photographers on YouTube, especially, you can see that a style or a way they do things might work better than the way you've been doing things. And also copying other images gives you compositional ideas. It gives you ideas on how to frame an image and what works and what doesn't work in an image. The reason I'm doing the video today is fellow YouTuber Neil Stevens. He did a video recently, and if you haven't seen his channel, I'll pop a link in the description. Excellent photographer, definitely worth checking out. He did a video where he took some photos of his local rapeseed fields. Now, I see rapeseed fields every year. They come out, I think it's they, there's winter and autumn, uh, spring uh, flowers, and we get the spring ones here. And I see them every year without fail. I never once thought to take a photo of them until I saw Neil's video and that inspired me to then want to go out and take photos myself and that's the second point is I know it's not the it's not why you should copy but it's definitely why you should watch other photographers or look at other photographs because it gives you inspiration and it gives you ideas on what you can do as a photographer that you may never have thought of. just walking up and down the side of these fields to try and find a good composition and I think I'm getting close to one here so you've got different levels so you can start it comes up the top then it dips down and then it comes back up again and dips down again and comes across here so I think that might make an interesting composition I've got to the top now you can just see the undulations here, which actually looks quite nice. But I think personally, I'm gonna go closer down to the dip, not too far down, but what will happen is the background here, the where the pylons are, that's gonna start going down or getting higher. So it will close some of that off and leave the sky more exposed. So we still want to keep these dips to show the perspective going through the image but not too much and not too little. So it's just working out a fine line for where the camera placement's gonna be. And that's gonna be the difference between having a good image and a great image. And it's one of the things that you can learn from other photographers by watching how they do things and where they place their camera and how low down and how high up. So definitely, uh, definitely useful to do those sorts of things and just follow them. You can see here, I don't know how well it's coming out on this camera, but as I get down lower, it's starting to close that background off. So you haven't got so much of it in the image. Now, if I get down even lower, it will close even more of it down. And you've still got some of that undulation, but not too much of it. But you could argue being up there gives you more of the, of the mid ground, if you like, and that'll make the image better. So, you know, it, it's, it's all down to what you feel as a photographer, as what you think is going to make a good image or not. A 
Okay, so we are just at the midpoint of the hill, I would say. We're not too high and we're not too low. So we've got to the point where it's almost perfect. We can get some of the rapeseed in the foreground with some height on it, but we're not high enough so that it flattens the image out completely and completely makes it look like just a, a sea of yellow. So we've still got some undulation in there and it still, it still looks quite nice, I think. So I'm gonna set that up right now. shots all set up I've had to come in a little bit because we've got this path down here which I like the path but it's also going to incorporate the hedge and a little bit of this field and some of that left hand side the tree and the, on the left hand side of the image there and I want to try and cut that out as much as I can the path I'm going to leave in because I don't want to be walking straight into the field so I'm going to leave that in it's going to kind of bring your eye in with a bit of a leading line uh, not nothing too special. It obviously would be a bit better if it was coming out towards the middle of the frame, but it's not. It's, it's running up the left edge of the, of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the mid ground. We've got some nice foreground rape seeds and they're moving so much. I think if if I try and stack an image, it will blur too much in, in Photoshop. So when I when I merge them together, it will be quite hard. You'll end up with little artifacts around where they haven't blurred quite well. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus mid ground. I've got my aperture at f13 just to give me a nice depth of field, and it should be enough just to keep everything in focus. Uh, 200 of a second and ISO 100. The sky is really muted and grey. There's some detail in it. I might be able to pull it out in Lightroom. I'm not too sure. And I think possibly the polar. I've got the polarizer on as well, and ho I'm hoping it could bring out some of the yellows in the rapeseed. So just to give that a little bit more. Um, vibrance and as you can see the sun just crossing the field and as it comes across the field i'm just taking different images the different different uh, lights patterns coming across the field just to see what looks best the polarizer will not it shouldn't really because the sun's not really at the right angle to really make any effect on the sky for the polarizer so i'm not really overly worried about that but the sun does come out it might make a difference it might not we'll have to wait and see in post so i'm going to take that image before my hat blows off and i'll pop it up on the screen so i have taken a couple of images i've included the tree in one of them and i've t cropped the tree out in the other so let me know what you think in the comments i'd love to know your thoughts on this does the triad balance with the pylon or does it distract your eye and take it out of the scene? Be interesting to find out what you think. And also I've got a couple of people walking through the image. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna show you them. Uh, depends on whether how it looks, it might, might distract from the scene. But I think it might add scale as they've gone through the image. It might add some scale to the size of the rape seeds, but I'll have a look in when I get back. Um, it might just completely be useless. So uh, whichever ones I decide to put up, they'll be up on the screen now. So I've just come down a little bit lower to try and get a few of the rape seeds a bit more prominent in the shot and see what type of different images I can come up with. So obviously copy your favorite photographers, but don't copy them exactly. I mean, with a caveat to that, that you can copy exactly because sometimes like this image I'll put up on the screen here, I took this image on a very narrow path and, and there's very limited compositional places that you can put your camera so most of the pictures that will come from that location not all but most of the pictures that will come from that location will look very similar so it's then up to you to start playing about with things like shutter speed or 
changing how you shoot, what time of day you shoot, whether you're using a wide angle lens, a macro lens, and just seeing what compositions you can come up with and what types of shots you can come up with and just make it your own image. So copying's fine and copying exact images of iconic landmarks and stuff is a really good way of learning, but try and make it your own. So similar image, still incorporating that left hand side of the hedge but this time coming down lower so you've got more of the poppies. Poppies? Did I call it poppies earlier? I don't know. So I've come down a little bit lower just to try and incorporate some more of those rapeseeds in the foreground. Now, similar composition with this one. The only difference being is height. I'm still using the left-hand side of the image to capture that leading line. And I'm also sticking to the same settings, ISO 200 this time, F9, 1 200th of a second to freeze the action. So final image about 15 metres into the field, I see a tractor trail going up, so leading line, leading line going that way. I'm going to grab a quick image from here. These are quite well spaced apart that you can get between them. Uh, I'm going to grab that image straight up and then I'm going to use the tree and the pylon and the edge of these trees here as a way to frame the image and to balance it, give it a bit of balance as well. So I've got my leading line going straight up. It's a bit more of a tidier composition than the last one, I think. But let me know if you think it works in the comments. I'll pop it up on the screen now. start copying your favourite photographers and level up your photography game. That just leaves me to say thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.